Welcome to the Farming Without the Bank podcast, the show with a no BS approach to money. Hosted by a farm strategy expert and authorized IBC practitioner. Join us as we get real and expose the flaws of traditional financial institutions in order to help farmers take control of their finances, create peace of mind, grow their wealth, and leave a legacy. Now, here's your host, Mary Jo Ehrman. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the podcast. Thank you very much for being here. I hope all is good. If you are new, this is going to be a pretty serious podcast. It's not going to be a normal podcast that I have done in the past. And I may have just talked about this briefly in the past, but we are going to sit down today and we are going to have a very heartfelt conversation. So... For those of you that don't have a lot of feelers like me, dig deep. (laughs) Dig deep, open up your mind. Okay. I just recently found out that I lost a client. She passed away from cancer and she was the only one that I ever talked to. I had never spoke to the husband. There are a lot of agents out there that will not do business with people that if both spouses are not in meetings. And I can understand that. That makes sense to me. But ideally, that is just not always possible in the farming and ranching world where both spouses are going to be in the same place at the same time. Should they be? Yes, that is 100% ideal, but not always going to be the case. So in this case, he was never in the meetings. I actually inherited them from another agent who was working with them and they didn't... It's not that they didn't like that agent. That agent just didn't understand farming and ranching. And so I inherited their policies and we took care of them. Well, she passed away and he filed the claim himself, the death claim. Now, that is not normal either in my office. I, we help every single client or their, you know, their surviving spouses or their surviving family. We help them file that claim because that claim can be a little bit cumbersome. Lots of things have to be sent into the company and, you know, the company doesn't, you're just another person to the company. They're not quite as understanding. And so he filed the claim himself because he did not have my correct number. She did absolutely everything. She was the one that talked to me. She was the one that did the accounting. She was the one that did any sort of paperwork, office stuff. He was the one that was out with the cattle all the time. She ran the business and she very much treated it like a business. Now, because she passed of cancer, they knew, you know, she knew it was coming. She knew that she needed to write everything down. And she wrote everything down, um, but she wrote numbers down wrong. (laughs) And so my phone number was incorrect and he could not get a hold of me. Sadly, the insurance company did not give him my information, which is extremely disappointing I can't say that any insurance company would have. They're big companies, they're, you know, corporations, people that work there don't always have common sense. They don't always call us the agent and say, hey, you know what? One of your clients passed away. Maybe you should reach out. They didn't do that. And I don't know an insurance company that does do that. And they have their own reasons why. And most of them, you know, they probably did try it at one point and the agent said, I don't care, that person's dead. Just file the claim for him. I don't want to have to deal with the claim. I'm not going to make any money off of that. And so most agents, frankly, just don't care. It's a little bit different story when you're talking about infinite banking because we become very personal with you. We, we are there to help you. We've developed a relationship with you. Most agents are selling you some term insurance and they you know, you died, have the family issue that claim, no big deal. But the whole point of this conversation, now that I've babbled for four minutes, the whole point of this conversation 
is do you understand what your spouse knows? And that goes both ways, inside the house and outside the house. I also have a client that is in his 70s and his spouse died, I don't know, 20 some years ago. Keep in mind, this guy is as Henri German as you can get. And he said to me, you tell all of your young people that they need to understand what's being paid in the bills and they need to pay attention. Because when she passed away, I hadn't ever gotten the mail in our marriage. She always got the mail. She always paid the bills. He said, I didn't even really know where the checkbook was. And so much less knowing what bills need to be paid. And even to this day, many, many, I've known him for about 12 years and she was gone before then. And even to this day, we really have to hold his hand when it comes to paying his premium and how everything works because he just doesn't understand it. And he chooses not to want to understand it, frankly. And so you have to want to understand some of it of what that person is doing in the house or outside of the house. If you are the man and you are outside and you are not paying attention to what bills are being paid inside, to how the business is being run, pay attention. And a lot of times I actually see women who are just oblivious to what's going on because the husband is taking care of the finances. I frankly don't care what spouse is taking care of the finances or business partner or partner in life. I don't care who's taking care of the finances. If you are not a financial person, you still need to know enough about what is going on so that when that person passes, you are not at a complete loss. This poor client of mine, not only did she pass away and he filed the claim on his own and death benefit was paid and all that good stuff, but he's having to figure out health insurance. He's having to figure out why is why was this amount deducted from the books? Because the one thing that he did do right away is he hired a bookkeeper, but he didn't know what these automatic deductions were. She had signed up for um, like a farm management course or something that was X amount per month. And he canceled that right away because he knew he wasn't going to want it because he's not going to run the business like she did. But he didn't know what it was for. He asked me if that was something that was that she had purchased through me. No, she had not. I don't I had not talked to her about that. I didn't know what that was for. But he's really having to fumble through finding all of that stuff, even though she had paper and everything written down for him so that if something happened, he would have all of that information. And at least he got the bookkeeper today. But the amount of time that he has spent fumbling through this process and trying to mourn her passing at the same time, because even though she was sick, she still ended up passing suddenly and unexpectedly. They did not expect her to pass when she did. And so... They did not have the time. They really thought they were going to have more time. You cannot just be in a relationship or even a business partnership. You cannot be in that situation where you think all is going to be fine and sunshine and rainbows in the world, okay? As much as my own husband does not like to know about the financial side of it because he just knows I have it taken care of, I still make him listen (laughs) because if I die tomorrow in a car accident, he is going to be a lost soul. Like I have my passwords written down. I'm like, this is what you need to do. These are the people you need to talk to. And it should he should just know more than that, right? He should know the majority of what's happening. And as my company grows, he pays more and more attention to those things. And it goes the opposite way as well. If you are a spouse 
and you don't know what tractors you own and you don't know what cows are yours and you don't know what land you're renting because you just let the other spouse do that, what are you going to do when the spouse that's handling all of the land rent and all of the cattle and who, what vet do we go to and where do we have fertilizer, seed, chemical, like what do we owe on a tractor? Who's our salesman? Who's the banker for that matter? A lot of spouses don't know who the banker is. They've never talked to the banker. So then when somebody passes, the banker decides that he's just going to not have any trust in the spouse at all. And he's going to start calling notes and telling you to pay things off because he frankly doesn't know if you can even handle it. If your spouse is going to the banker, your butt better be beside him. I don't care if you don't say anything, but at least listen. Listen enough to when you leave, you start asking questions, okay? Because the banker will always poo-poo the person that's never been there. But then when the person, you know, or they'll say, yeah, let me talk to the spouse because that's the one I normally deal with especially when it comes to women. I have heard this over and over and over again that when the spouse dies or when the woman has a question, they're like, oh, I'll just, I'll just tell your husband. No, the husband's not asking the question. The wife is now at the point of asking the question. The banker better be answering the wife if that's who's asking the question. Now imagine that situation where the husband died. And the wife is trying to get some sort of explanation. But when you lose somebody, your brain is not absorbing the information like it was before. It's not happening. Nelson, before Nelson passed away, he prepared Mary to be a widow. And, you know, those of us that knew Nelson, he was talking about passing and he was talking about his graduation day years before it happened. He was prepared. He knew he was going to go. He was the longest living one in his family. He had been preparing for quite some time. And he had gone to a funeral of a family member and the wife did not know anything about the finances. And he came home and he said, Mary, I'm going to prepare you to be a widow. You are now going to pay all the bills. And so when the bills came, she said, well, Nelson, what is this or what is that? And he said, I don't know. I'm not here. I'm dead. <laughs> he said, I was preparing her to be a widow. And that is nearly what we should all be doing is preparing our spouse to be a widow, even if it's for a short time. I don't care. You don't have to keep paying the bills, right? But when the banker calls, you're gone, you're dead. And now somebody else has to try to navigate that. At least they can navigate that with a clear brain instead of going through this mourning process. Write your stuff down. My wonderful friend Jolene Brown talks about that all the time. Write your stuff down, put it on a piece of paper, put it in the safe so everybody knows who they should call, what is their number, who do we talk to about this, who do we talk to about that. If your spouse doesn't know those things, you need to sit down and have that conversation. If you are the spouse that doesn't want to care about those things, get your head out of the sand and pay attention. And yes, I'm going to be very blunt and matter of fact about that because you need to pay attention. There are a lot of things that go on in our household that I frankly just don't care about, like oil filters and changing oil on things. I just don't care. However, I care enough to know that, oh, the oil needs to be changed in the generator right? That was a conversation that we had this last weekend. I'm like, oh, good to know. I would have not thought that, right? Like all the things that my husband does outside, changing the oil and the tractors and the, oh my God, it's like the never ending oil changing 
the the care, the greasing, the oh, I would just get in and drive. He's so good about filling gas in everything and remembering to get gas, right? I just don't remember those things. I don't make sure the propane's filled around here. He does that stuff. Just like he doesn't make sure we have groceries in the fridge. Like he would go buy groceries for today and then he would go tomorrow and buy groceries for tomorrow. (laughs) He is just, he doesn't care about those sort of things, but he makes sure everything outside is done. And as much as I frankly just don't care about what's going on, and I just want to show up and sit on the lawnmower and mow at number four. <laughs> For those of you that listen to Barn Talk, I just want to show up on the mower and mow. And I don't want to have to fill the gas and change the oil and do all the things. You know, I'm not t- putting the snow blowers on, taking the snow blowers off. Oh my God, putting the bucket on, taking the bucket off. Like, I just don't care. But I have to. I have to know how to do it. I have to know how to run the tractor in case something happens to him and I have to be the one that has to move snow. Pay attention. Get your head out of the sand because someday somebody is going to graduate in this relationship and you are going to be left in a situation where you don't know. Are you signers on both people's accounts? Can you sign on the account? Do you know how much money you owe the bank? Do you know how much money the business is making? If you are the spouse that is not sharing that information, then you need to share it. If you are the couple that cannot get along and have the conversation, you need to figure out how you're going to get along to have the conversation, okay? This is typically what I see. If a woman is asking for information and the husband is answering that information with a tone in their voice, like, how do you not know this? This is basic information. Then you, the spouse that is answering, if you are the husband answering a wife, then you better change your tone. She is wanting to know, take the time to teach her. I have had so many couples in my meetings where the husband has all the numbers in their head and the wife is freaked out about the numbers. Why? Because she doesn't know them, because nothing is being relayed to her. And so then we have this contention about farming and that we don't make any money and that it's hard and all of these things. Well, those things don't even need to happen if the conversation is had and we understand the risk, we understand the gain. But if we keep it all in our head and try to protect her, are we really protecting her when the situation all falls apart? Are we really protecting him when the situation all falls apart? This particular client told me, he's like, I miss her terribly every single day, every day. The dynamics of their business were not just simple. They have pastures in two different states. They have a summer pasture and a winter pasture. Her family is involved in stuff. Now she's gone. What is he going to do? It is actually quite complicated to the point where there really needed to even be more conversation, but because it was still somewhat sudden, that didn't happen. Those conversations need to happen. People, you need to pay attention to things you don't necessarily want to pay attention to, okay? I don't want to know about what oil needs to be used. And I can look that up, right? But I know that I have to do maintenance at these points. I know I have to do these things. I know where things are stored, If you have cattle, you need to know where they're at. If you have land, you need to know where it's at. You need to know whose name it is, whose name it's under. And one of the states that they have land in, he has to go through probate. Another state, he does not. And he just got her share of the land. In this other state, he has to go through probate. That's a big deal, right? Those sort of things should be looked at ahead of time. I would have not thought of that. But those sort of things need to be looked at ahead of time. An estate plan 
needs to be done. Please pay attention and know what your spouse knows. Not every single detail, but know enough about it that you know who to call and you will not get taken for a ride upon somebody's passing. Okay. Again, I didn't think that was going to be that long. But it is a much bigger deal than what most people want it to be. And let me tell you, it's been six months that she's been gone. And when I talked to him, it sounded like it was yesterday. If you think you're going to move on very, very quickly and all is going to be good in the world, it takes my widows and widowers at least a year to think straight, two years before they can really just kind of get their bearings and move on without crying every day, without finding some sort of frustration every day of, well, what? What was done there? What was done there? It's crazy. It is far more than what most people think. All right. Have the conversation with your spouse. Both of you, open your eyes to what the other one is doing. If you have comments, questions, concerns, let me know. Mary Jo at withoutthebank.com. If you are a client and you are listening to this, your invitation For the Black Sheep Summit, the client-only summit that we are having went out to you last week to register. So if you're a client and you got the email or you got the email and you probably didn't see it, go to your email and look for that invitation so you can get registered for San Antonio's client-only conference, okay? If you want to bring somebody that is not a client, better ask. I mean... Certain circumstances, if it's a spouse, yes. If your spouse doesn't have a policy, you can probably bring your spouse. But if it is a business partner or something, it's probably a no because they are not a client, okay? So let me know if you need anything. Obviously, if you haven't gotten the book yet or anything like that, go grab the book. What are you waiting for? All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in and have a fantastic rest of your day. Thanks for listening to the Farming Without the Bank podcast. We hope today's episode has inspired you to take control of your finances in new ways. Don't forget to check out our website, farmingwithoutthebank.com, and engage with us on our Facebook page, Farming Without the Bank. Join us next week as we smash more financial myths and empower you to accomplish your financial goals.